how do we control what we have? Good morning, my name is Father Frank Buckley. I am the host of our morning meditation program, Flourishing During Times of Uncertainty. Welcome to our morning practice. It's, in my opinion, one of the most important things we do on a daily basis. This morning, we will begin with a little inspiration from the Missionaries of Charity from the book Finding Calcutta and addressing the question I pose to begin this morning, how do we control what we have? I think the Missionaries of Char Charity are an outstanding example of how to move in a new direction. So I hope you enjoy that this morning. The second part of the program will be our 20 minute uh, meditation. And then the last part will be our Jesuit Ignatian exam where we'll notice where God came alive recently. So under the uh, question, how do we control what we have? Let's see what the book Finding Calcutta and the missionaries of charity might have to say about this. Someone once asked Mother Teresa if she was spoiling the poor, to which she replied, there are many congregations who spoil the rich. It is good to have one congregation in the name of the poor to spoil the poor. Father Scolosi, who worked with Mother for over 20 years, remembers that when she said this, the room fell silent for a long, long while. One week, a rumor circulated that a few of the women, women who had filled their pots in the morning were selling the food on the street. The volunteers who saw it confronted the missionary in charge. She simply and calmly replied, not to worry, it all belongs to God. She was not going to spend any energy or time policing the food or scrutinizing the people who came for help. If there was a problem, God would have to take care of it. After all, it was his food and his work. The rumor soon lost its force. The missionaries of charity do not concern themselves with controlling what they have. They simply give it away. There are no criteria or qualification procedures for receiving help from the missionaries. If you come one day or every day, it doesn't even matter to them. They do not fret about things that might make them less effective in their mission to serve the poorest of the poor. If they hear of families who are ill or hungry, two sisters go to them with food. If the family cannot cook, they cook it for them. If the family has no strength, they feed them, clean up afterwards, and return until the family can manage again on their own. They do not analyze the worthiness of people or the cause of their poverty. They simply act as quickly as possible to the best of their ability. Wow, thank you, Susanna Funston, for that book. What a beautiful way to start the morning letting go of this idea of the worthy and the unworthy poor. We're in the middle of a pandemic. People are losing their jobs all around us. The number of unhoused increase daily. How do we respond? Personally, I cannot think of a better model than Mother Teresa and the missionaries of charity but we cannot do this work alone. Mother Teresa again and again will say it is God's work. So we give this next 20 minutes to God to do with as he will. And as Father Thomas Keating says, when we go in with this attitude, 
we simply cannot get it wrong. So let's begin. I invite you, one of the ways we flourish is to unplug. Also, I haven't said this in a while, but take your shoes off. I saw a great program the other day on the importance of being grounded on the earth. One of the biggest destructions to health has been rubber because we many times go through the day in our tennis shoes without ever touching the earth. So this is your opportunity to take the shoes off, allow your soles of the feet to touch down on the earth. I'll set the timer for 20 minutes so you can put your cell phones on silent or stun. I'll start the timer. I invite you to lower the eyes, take the attention to the breath, and let's begin. Listen, listen, the sound of this beautiful bell returns us to our true home. As always, we begin with diaphragmatic breathing, that is breathing deeply as possible into the lower belly three times. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Together, inhale and exhale. Beautiful. Two more times. Inhale. And exhale. Last time. Deeply as possible. Inhale. And exhale. Wonderful job, everyone. Turn the attention to the body. Feel the soles of the feet pressed on to the green earth. And just notice how solid the earth feels beneath you. Take the attention to the hands as they press on to the lap. And just notice any sensation. Lengthen the spine, healthy spine, healthy body. On the exhale, let the shoulders drop, letting go of anything you've been holding on to recently, surrendering to God. Moving the attention to the front of the body, we connect with the heart. The place the spiritual world touches the physical world. Let's see if we can come up with something we're grateful for this morning and name it in one word. Very gently attach the word to the heart. And as a community, let's breathe one time into gratitude. Inhale. And exhale. And just notice what you feel. Finally, we arrive at the forehead, the area between the eyebrows, the seat of intuition, a place that always tells the truth, and we focus on an intention for today, something we desire deeply in our life in this moment, being curious and courageous enough to ask God for something really great and beautiful. Seal that intention with an inhale. 
and exhale. Take the attention to the breath. Engage the sacred word. Drop down and enjoy a little deep rest. Please continue.
bring your attention back to the room your eyes were closed open the eyes you can circle the wrist one way and then the other Take the elbow across the shoulder one time then the other way circle the shoulders reverse the train inhale raise the arms up exhale shake out anything you've been holding on to Wonderful job, everyone. Today is Tuesday, September 1st. Today is going to be a great day. We'll move into our little Ignatian Jesuit examine and just where you discovered God recently. One of the things we try to do to flourish is to build up a little community, to connect, connect, connect. And one of the ways we do this is just by dropping a little uh, note in the comment box about how you're doing, where God came alive for you, or just saying hello. I apologize. I usually like to write a little comment back to all of you, but yesterday, for many different reasons, got away from me. But today is a new day, and uh, I will re-engage. Um, so... Uh, where did God come alive, building up this attitude of gratitude in our hearts, becoming contemplatives in action? Looking back over the 20, last 24 hours, first thing that uh, comes to mind is it's a beautiful, cool morning in Hollywood, and I took uh, our two little dogs for a walk in the Hollywood Hills, and it was absolutely uh, lovely. Uh, second, um, last night we had our Jesuit community night, um, and, uh, oh, I invite your prayers. My friend Lorette has a friend, and both her mom and dad are really struggling with COVID-19 in Chicago. Uh, Lorette, I see you're in the room. Maybe you can put their names down, and we'll continue to pray for them. I, uh, offer this morning's meditation for them. And I invite you to do the same. And for all those who are struggling with COVID-19 or, you know, these are tough times, other struggles right now. Um, and then, so, uh, oh, sorry, last night uh, was our Jesuit community meeting. And uh, we talked about the qualities we uh, des would desire in a new provincial. And, uh, one thing was so beautiful came to mind for me in this book I told you I'm liking, Unlikely Companions, the relationship between Carl Jung and Ignatius. Carl Jung says something very interesting. Uh, he said, uh, when it comes to Ignatius, even though he spent his whole life trying to define personality types, he couldn't get him quite into a box. But the one characteristic he said that stood out for Ignatius, I've never heard anyone say this about Ignatius before, was that Ignatius was charming. And the more I've prayed and thought about it, the more that has resonated as true. 
and why Ignatius was able with less than a dozen people go out into the whole world and set it on fire and invite us to do the same. My hunch is he was charming because he got a glimpse of the way God loved him so unconditionally. And then the last uh, place I've noticed God come alive, uh, most of you know, on Tuesday at 11 on the patio at the center, we do our uh, Flourishing and Recovery, which is a recovery group for people living on the streets. And we can fit about 12 to 13 people. And it's really amazing. This little community of people struggling with recovery, uh, even while physically living on the streets and building a little community. So it always uh, warms my heart when I get to do that group. All right, uh, put your comments in the box. Hope you have a wonderful Tuesday, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Wednesday. God bless.